to the Functional Flex Cavecast, coming to you live from the Strength Cave headquarters. Here is your coach, Ryan Milton. Hey there, Strength Cavers, Functional Flexians, and any human on planet Earth who is trying to make gains and better themselves in the gym. It is Coach Ryan, and I am here for this next cave cast, which is number seven, I believe. Not exactly 100%. I'm going to check that later. It doesn't matter. Point is, you guys, we are going to answer some questions today. We're going to get some answers, some results, and some progress made on so many levels, okay? So if you don't know, my YouTube was recently hacked and deleted. I don't have any more information than that at this stage. But basically, I've got, taken this as an opportunity to restart and rebrand myself a bit. So now I'm doing this thing, new slogans called Be Your Own Guru, because I want to give you guys the tools, tips, strategies, and techniques that you need to achieve results mainly on your own pretty much all the way on your own because I think so much of this stuff can be done you guys on your own you don't need to pay a coach you don't need to hire somebody you don't need to pay these thousand dollars to these gurus but you can do so much of this stuff all on your own at home okay so what I want to do with this podcast is add a new category we've been doing training nutrition mindset now we're gonna throw in some contest prep I'm gonna take three questions at each and we're gonna spit this thing up I'm gonna keep it moving quick I want to get you guys this information so that you can utilize it for yourselves you can take this information and help other people whatever you guys this knowledge this stuff is power knowledge applied to life is power okay so you have to make sure that you take something from this and use it you got to experiment with it you got to try it you got to give it to somebody else you got to help okay you can't just take this knowledge and do nothing knowledge with no action is fucking nothing <laughs> but knowledge with action is power you guys so let's get it going right now let's get it started and let's start making some gains i'm gonna try to get this done quick for you guys three questions for training let's kick it up all right first question hey ryan i am a man trying to work on my v taper what exercises should I focus on to create this look? Okay, irrelevant that you're a man. Oh, sorry, Jacob. Uh, irrelevant that you're a man, though, because in this sense, V Taper works for ladies and men because our bodies are going to be pretty similar in this regard. Basically, the V Taper, for those of you that don't know, it's going to be a narrow waist with a wider, broader shoulders, lats coming in, all that kind of sweep action happening there. So basically, if you looked at someone from the back, you would see wider, broader shoulders that taper down into a narrow waist. Okay, this is a bodybuilder look, but this is also a very common, just desired look in general for men and women both. So here's what you do for the V Taper. You got to get your waistline in check. You got to shrink that thing down. So if you got extra fat on it, burn the fat. If you uh, are not doing stuff for your diaphragmatic muscles like vacuums or you know any type of diaphragmatic breathing where you're going to contract those muscles, really try to narrow that waist in, you need to start with that right away. If you don't know what the vacuum is, basically you let all your air out, right? So you breathe it all out and then you suck in your stomach and pull it in as hard as you can. I think like you're pulling your belly button in towards your spine and you hold that position with no air for as long as you can, up to 30 seconds. Once you get better at it, you can actually breathe a little bit while you do it and uh, that's gonna really help narrow in that waistline because you guys, you have this diaphragmatic muscle, your intra, you know, uh, abdominal muscles, transverse abdominus, all these things which is like your inner weight belt, right? And these muscles get kind of at a relaxed position when we sit and when we do stuff when like right now mine's totally out <laughs> so like I have no good ab stuff going on it's bad for posture it's bad for breathing and it's bad for that V taper okay so what you guys want to do is you want to work on that and that's really gonna pull that in now when it comes to building the lats you got to do uh, vertical pulling exercises and horizontal pulling exercises and deadlifts even to that degree to kind of widen up the back, upper back, get the shoulders and all that developed, okay? So vertical pull, horizontal pull, and deadlifts. And you're going to be doing things that are in, you know, mm, the three to four set range in the 10 to 12 rep range. Now that's gonna be maximal reps because we're building hypertrophy there. So you wanna be really burning out at that 10 to 12 rep. You don't wanna get beyond that. Like you should be toast. You shouldn't be able to get 15. And if you're getting too much less, you're gonna be more in the strength category. So you're not gonna actually be building the muscle you need to get the V taper, okay? So there you go. It's gonna be a vertical pull, uh, horizontal pull, deadlifts, three sets, 8 to 12 reps in there somewhere and then uh, you're gonna want to do vacuums three sets 30 seconds 
do those vacuums daily that's gonna be real good and it's hard to learn so if you have a hard time figuring it out go to my YouTube check that out I got stuff on there you can Google it otherwise and figure it out there's tons of information on it real old-school exercise all right training question number two Ryan I am trying to really create a shelf look for my glutes what do I need to do thank you Amy Amy, the shelf look for glutes comes down to some basic stuff. You really got to target it in a few different ways, but it really comes down to glute activation. I just did a video about this on my YouTube, so you can fly back there and check that out. It's uh, workouts for women number one if you're on YouTube. And if you guys don't follow me on YouTube, go find me. It's youtube.com slash functional flex fitness. But the shelf look for glutes, you got to activate the glutes. And what I mean by that is a lot of ladies go into the gym right now and you've been sitting on your ass all day at work or in the car or at home or whatever and then you go try to work your ass. Guess what, ladies? Your ass is asleep. It's not going to wake up. It's not ready to work. So when you train it, you're not training those muscles because they're just not active. The nerve endings are not stimulated and you're not getting the muscles to fire the way they should. And then all of a sudden you're developing out of proportion quads and things like that because your legs are working real hard when you're trying to train your booty, but your booty's not working and that's not good. So you got to activate the glutes. That's going to be king. That's going to be huge huge okay so do some single leg floor bridges do some band resistance band work you guys probably seen those mini bands and things like that you can put around your legs do that that's gonna fire up some of the glutes you gotta roll the glutes you gotta get the proprioception in there we gotta really wake those muscles up so that they can work when you train and then when it comes to training them do things like hip bridges do kickbacks do uh, single leg deadlifts do all kinds of things like that that are going to really isolate it. And you have to work on your mind-muscle connection when you do it. You really got to think about the muscle you're trying to work and feel it. That is key. Too many people go through the motions and you're never going to make progress like that. You really got to connect your mind into that. And you got to literally be picturing the shelf booty you're trying to build, Amy. So go to work on that and let me know how that goes. If you need extra help, I got you covered. Training question number three, what is the correct rep range for muscle hypertrophy? Great question right here, no name, thank you for dropping that. Okay, H muscle hypertrophy, it's going to come down to 8 to 12 repetitions. Now that's like a pretty generic term, right? That sounds like, oh, come on, Ryan, everybody knows that. Well, a lot of people think they know that, but don't do it right anyway. So here's what you got to do, 8 to 12 repetitions to failure. So that means you're not getting more than that. You're not going to go into 15, you couldn't get more, you're not just pumping out 8 to 12 and then feeling pretty good about it you're pumping out 8 to 12 and almost dying on the 12th rep you literally have to be struggling through it grinding taking your muscles to failure on the last rep so if you're shooting for 8 fail at 8 you're shooting for 10 fail at 10 you're shooting for 12 fail at 12 but you must fail for that set you could not get another one this is absolutely critical and so many people underestimate it and are not willing to push the limit on there but that is how we grow muscles that's how we build muscles that's how muscle hypertrophy occurs and your tempo of movement is super critical too, everybody so many people are pulling weights and dropping them too quick you really need to have full control and tempo of the repetition so basically you want to focus on the positive portion of the movement so when you're lifting the weight it should be one to two seconds and then the negative when the weight is lowering back down towards the earth when gravity is being pulled uh, when gravity is pulling the weight down that is where you're gonna want to do a more like a three to four second negative so that's gonna happen to each rep so if you think about this a four to one tempo would be one second up four seconds down every single rep you have constant tension on these muscles and you're gonna really grow them this is how you get muscle hypertrophy time under tension control and perfect form with failure is the formula for muscle hypertrophy so apply that to your training doesn't matter if you're a man a woman whatever alien you can do this and you can make gains this way all right, that's three questions for training, everybody. Let's move right along into nutrition. Hey, Ryan, I've been trying to meal prep, but I find that I worry about my food going bad in the fridge for so long, and I end up throwing it out and eating out instead. What can I do to prevent this? Brittany. All right, Brittany, well, this is not an easy thing. Just kidding, it is an easy thing. Here's what you do. <laughs> I've had this happen to me before. I used to prep out about seven days or whatever. And then, you know, sometimes you get a little worried about that food just sitting in the fridge. You're like, what? How long can it sit there? You look shit up on the internet. Everything is different. And it doesn't look like it ever can last seven days. So here's what you do, Brittany. You do two meal preps, okay? So you do one on Sunday, say, prep through Wednesday. So you got three days in there. And then you do another one on Wednesday that goes ahead and gets you through the next three, four days there to the next meal prep. So you've split it up into two, food doesn't go bad. 
other option, this is one I like better, is if you don't have a lot of time to prep twice in the week, you can go ahead and just do all of your food on a Sunday or something like that or whatever your off day is and then put half of it in the freezer. So you put it in the freezer, it's not gonna go bad in there, right? And then as the week goes on, you're eating through your meals, you start pulling them out so they can thaw out and then you can hit them with the microwave or heat them up in a pan, whatever you do and eat them but that tends to work pretty well and then you can eliminate that worry of if it's going bad or not and then you can stop eating out and stay on your plan Brittany so have fun with that let me know how that goes question number two I see you always talk about being able to eat your favorite foods and still make gains exactly what are you talking about and how do I do it Mike Mike my brother Here's what you do, buddy, flexible dining. <laughs> and this doesn't mean eat donuts and ice cream and pizza every meal. This means you take control of your nutrition and you do something sustainable and controllable and long-term, something you can sustain for a lifetime, not something that lasts a short period of time and then you're off track. You want something that lasts and you want results that are gonna last. So here's what you do. You get your meal plan set, right? You get all of your foods planned out, whatever you're gonna do. You're tracking your macros fine, whatever. You wanna have mainly healthy stuff, 80, to 90% just healthy straight up stuff. You don't have to ask me what that is. You know the answer. If you have to ask me if it's healthy, it's not. Stop, <laughs> stop right there, move on. Don't even ask me, don't waste your time. You know it's not healthy if you're sitting there questioning if it is or not, okay? And then you leave a little bit of room every day, whether it's you're counting macros or in your meal plan, for this cheat style food, right? These unhealthy foods, these quote unquote problematic foods that you can eat daily. You put those post-workout, you can eat, uh, you know, whatever you want, chocolate, ice cream, pizza, burritos, whatever. Make it fit your goals, make it fit your macros, make it fit in your meal plan. Whatever you're trying to do, make it fit in and be consistent with it and eat those mainly good, healthy foods for you. And guess what, Mike? You're on the gains train, brother. Long-term gains, you can still eat your favorite foods. No problems there, my friend. Have fun with that. Question number three, nutrition. Hi, Coach Ryan. I am an average, everyday gym goer who wants to lose some weight and build some muscle. Is it possible to do both these things at the same time? I hear mixed thoughts on this, and I want your opinion. Thanks, Christy. Well, Christy, thank you for asking my opinion on this. Here it is. It's a lot harder than you think it is to be doing those things. And everybody wants to do this, right? Everybody always says they want to build muscle and burn fat. Well, the problem with this is is muscle building occurs in a caloric surplus. So when you eat more calories than your body needs to maintain your current weight. And fat loss occurs in a caloric deficit. So when you eat less calories than your body needs to maintain its current weight. So here's the problem, right? If we wanna build muscle, we need calories that are higher. And if we wanna burn fat, we need lower calories. So how do we do both at the same time? It's called a recomposition. It's complicated, it's hard to do, but it can be done. So I'll tell you how to do it, but I would recommend instead that you focus on one goal first, and then you attack the other one. So for example, do fat loss strictly, eat in a caloric deficit and train. Uh, Don't stop lifting weights, of course. It's gonna be good for your muscles, no doubt. You're not gonna put on a huge amount of mass or anything like that, but you will definitely be able to train. So train and put yourself into a caloric deficit for eight to 12 weeks, monitor your progress, burn fat, then go into a muscle building phase, raise your calories a bit and start building more muscle and then just taper back off and do a fat loss again. So you just keep doing that cycle. That's the kind of the way it works. But if you wanna try the recomp, it's a little more difficult. Basically what you need to do is you need to have specific macros you're eating for on certain days of the week when you're training with weights and then specific ones where you're not Uh, when you're on a rest day that are different. So it's gonna be more like high carb macros on a weight training day with a caloric surplus. So you're gonna wanna be packing up those calories that day because you're gonna wanna actually be recovering, trying to build muscle. Then on your off days, you will drop your calories, drop your carbs, and burn fat strictly because you're not training with weights that day. So your training program needs to be pretty set up well here and smart to make sure that you can actually do this. Because if you're training with weights six days a week or something like that crazy, like I see all the time in these split training programs, and then you take one rest day, clearly you're gonna be in a high caloric surplus most of the time, thus never burning fat. But if you're actually gonna do uh, it this way, you would train three days a week, right? So you do full body workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Off days are gonna be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So you do higher calories, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You do lower calories, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's gonna get you fat loss and muscle gain. 
Again, it is hard to do. You need to be pretty constant with monitoring that and making sure that that's happening. So track your stuff, make sure it's happening. If it's not, do the other approach I mentioned before and focus on one goal for a bit and then switch the goal later. All right, Christy, have fun. Let me know if you need help. All right, moving right into that mindset, mindset, mindset. This is king, you guys. Mindset's king over everything. Remember that. I said it first. <laughs> All right, uh, question number one. Hey, Ryan, so I injured my shoulder about two months ago, and it prevented me from hitting the gym at the intensity I used to. This has me feeling like I'm making no progress, and my motivation is completely tanked. What can I do to get back? No name. Okay, my no name friend common thing it doesn't matter if it's just a shoulder injury any injury when people get injured and guess what injuries will happen eventually uh, no matter what because people can literally not even injure themselves in the gym and get injured by slipping on uh, <laughs> wet sidewalk or something like that it's happened before you guys you can stub your toe trip on stairs do something like that and you now you're injured and it affects your training so injuries will happen be ready for that here's how you be ready for that basically you have to understand that injuries are something that are gonna happen they're, they're going to be there. You can't really control them. No matter how much you want to try to prevent it or all that, you can do all that. But in the end, there's going to be things you can't control. There's always going to be variables that are uncontrollable. Obviously, the more you pay attention to injury prevention, you do your warm-ups, you do your stretching, you do myofascial release, you do all these types of things to kind of prevent that. That's going to dramatically help and reduce it, no doubt. But then there's still the uncontrolled variable, you guys. This is a world where crazy shit happens all the time that we can't control. So you got to be prepared. Here's what you need to do. You need to understand that it's part of the process. There's gonna be times you strain a muscle, you're feeling tired, you're feeling weak, you injure yourself, you fall, something happens and you are prevented from hitting the gym at the same intensity. Here's what you do, you keep fucking going. You do what you can, you do your best and you don't stop. Because here's what happens, when you stop you get failed. You fail, uh, you're getting failure, you've you know, demotivated yourself, you're unhappy, and that is the ultimate riddle for disaster right there. You need to be consistent, you need to continue going. You hurt your shoulder, okay? I don't even know who you are, but you hurt your shoulder. Guess what? That's one part of your body. You got all these other things to work on. Uh, work on. Focus on something different. Focus on a new goal. Take your goals where you can. Your legs still work, I'm assuming, right here. So go train your legs hard. Focus on a new goal for legs. Figure something out. You want bigger legs? You want leaner legs? What do you want? Figure that out. Work on that. Don't pay attention to your shoulder. Your shoulder is going to heal. It's part of the process. Your body will heal. You'll be back one day and you're going to be stronger than ever because of this injury. So focus now on what you can do, what you can learn from this, and how you can better yourself, how you can help others because you are not alone. This happens to people all the time and your motivation might be tanked and you might feel like you're making no progress but it's because you're looking at progress in the wrong way. You need to look at progress in every regard. Look at this as an opportunity to grow because it is. When you get through this, when you're over the hill, once you've healed, once you're back and you're training again at the same intensity, you have been in the dumps and you've climbed back out. And you can now help other people do that. You can better yourself. You can be stronger. You can do so many more things. You will not regret the injury. I promise you that because it's going to be an opportunity for growth if you look at it that way. So start focusing on that. Change your focus to something new for a new goal and go ahead and keep growing through this. Keep moving forward and stay consistent, my friend. Mindset number two, Coach Ryan, I do my check-ins with myself weekly to review my measurements and pictures as you have recommended. But I find that I don't see progress week to week and sometimes this makes me unmotivated. Am I supposed to see changes every week, Martina? All right, Martina, you are not supposed to see changes every week. You will not see changes every week. So if you're getting unmotivated, it's because you're setting unrealistic expectations for yourself. In seven days, you will never achieve huge, huge results. There is no way. It doesn't even matter if you're taking the world's craziest super drugs or something like that. You will not achieve crazy results in seven days because there's just simply not enough time there. But guess what happens? When we do check-ins every week, we build consistency. We're being constantly aware of our body. We're being constantly aware of where we're at. And we just keep going. We keep moving forward. Because when you lose track of where you are, when you stop taking your measurements, you stop taking your pictures, you stop tracking your results, that's when you start to get off course that's when you start to mess up the plan that's when you start to get more lax more lazy and then over time that really lowers your standard of result that's really gonna lower how far you can go and what you do with your nutrition and your training and your mindset and all of it because you've just simply kept lowering the bar over time by not paying attention so 
I have everybody always do check-ins weekly with pictures, measurements, stats, all of it related to their goals because it is absolutely critical that you are constantly aware of your physique. You cannot forget that you're working for a goal with it, so you have to constantly be aware of what's happening with it. And you're not going to see changes week to week, and that's fine. But guess what? When you look back on the timeline, say three to six months, you're going to have stepping stones for each and every single week, and you're going to have all this progress to look at and all these results, and that's going to be super motivating to you. Once you get three months down the road and you look back at those first check-ins, you're going to be like, what the is that? Because guess what? When you live in your body 24-7, you don't notice the change. You're not going to ever look down at your arm and say, wow, my arm grew overnight. It's not going to happen because guess what? You're going to be years down the road and still feel like you're in the same body you were if you're not tracking results. So that's why you must track and that's why you need to keep that goal in mind. It's the long-term game. Okay, Martina? So stay with it and keep doing it. And I promise you, you won't regret it ever. Question number three for mindset. How do I focus better in the gym? That's it. No name. Okay. You focus better in the gym by not fucking off in the gym. (laughs) I mean, I say that as it's so simple, but it really is. So many people are texting between sets. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're chatting with everybody in the gym. They're doing half-ass sets. They're doing half reps. They're talking while they're on reps. They're on their phone doing stuff. It's crazy. I can't believe half the stuff I see in the gym. You focus better in the gym by only focusing on the exercise you're doing. And I literally mean that. Like, I've worn earplugs in the gym before because I don't want to listen to the shit in the gym. I don't want to listen to the people talking. I don't want to listen to the music or the TVs or whatever. I just want to be in the zone. I want to train my body because that's why you're there, you guys. The gym is not a social event. Don't you dare go into the gym and start chatting up. I don't care if you have training partners or friends. Train! Guess what? When the gym's over, you can go sit at the coffee shop. You can go to a restaurant. You can have a post-workout meal where you can chat up, you can do all that, and it actually serves a purpose at that point. But sitting in the gym just doing nothing is never going to be good. It is never going to produce the results you want, and it's never going to bring you to what you're going to do if you're sitting there just messing around the entire time you're in the gym, okay, guys? So what I really want you to do is make sure that you're focused on the muscle. You need to be paying attention to what you're training. You need to be paying attention to what you're doing, and you need to be paying attention to strictly the movement. So sit in there and literally think of your muscle. Think of what's happening. Think of each body part moving. Think of why you're doing it, the results you want, and the goals you're trying to create. And stay on that. Don't you dare text in between sets. Don't you dare surf on Instagram. If you're tracking your weights and stuff on your phone, great. My app does that. My online coaching app has you do that. But I don't have you do anything else besides that. You're tracking your stuff because guess what? It betters your gains. It betters your results. It betters your progress over time. If you can't handle that, go lock your damn phone up. Put it in the locker. Put a lock on it and don't look at it the entire workout. Tell your girlfriend, tell your boyfriend, sorry, I have to train and stop texting them while you're training because you're there for you. You're there for your results and that's what you need to focus on and what you need to pay attention to and that's how you focus better in the gym contest prep final category three questions to go and then we're going to be done with this podcast you guys here we go hey ryan i see you train a lot of bikini competitors and i'm wondering what the timeline is for figuring out when you could be competition ready thank you ashley Ashley, competition ready is going to depend on variable factors. I did a video a little bit about this a while ago, a couple weeks. Uh, bikini competitor, bikini competition overview. It's on my YouTube. Go back there, watch that. That'll give you a good idea. But just to answer this question, you uh, would need to assess where you're at. You need to know where you're currently at. You need to know if you have the right amount of muscle mass. You need to know what your body fat is. You need to know all these variables and figure out how long it's going to take you to train. Now, most contest preps, somebody's going to give you a generic thing and say it's going to take 12 weeks. Well, that kind of depends on where you're starting, though, in a lot of ways. If you need to build a substantial amount of muscle mass, add three months to that schedule, okay? If you're already pretty muscular and you're already fairly lean, a 12-week prep is going to be great for you, probably, because you can do the initial four weeks and then do the next eight kind of tapering down, getting ready for the comp. But it comes down to who you are and where you're at. So you should get in touch with a coach, have somebody look at where your physique is at currently, your measurements, your pictures, all that. And then somebody should be able to give you a timeline. Anybody who's been doing this a long time should be able to say, okay, you need about X amount of weeks, etc. following this plan, following this nutrition, and then you're going to be contest ready. I can totally answer those questions for you too if you want. Send me an email, ryan.milton at functionalflexfitness.net, and I will help you out, Ashley. Thank you. Contest prep number two. I am a bodybuilder and I'm running myself through a contest prep. What do I need to do as far as cutting down for competition to make sure I'm ready? 
Cutting down for competition, my friend. Okay, congrats to you for trying to run this on your own. That's tough shit, but I'm glad you're doing it. It's a good experience for you to learn something, okay? But here's what you got to do. You uh, need to taper your calories down. Simple as that. So you need to figure out where you're at now. I don't know what stage your prep you're in. You didn't really mention here. But uh, when it comes to actually leaning down, it's called caloric restriction, my friend. You want to get those cows down below your maintenance and you're going to start burning body fat. Now your goal is obviously to maintain as much muscle as possible. So make sure your macros align with that. You want to mainly drop your carbs out and keep your protein up and all that kind of stuff to make sure you're not burning through your gains. You want to keep those gains. Don't do too much crazy cardio. A lot of the shit that I see in the guru world is talking about two hours of cardio a day fasted and then training with weights later in the afternoon and then yada yada etc. Bullshit. Don't do it. Don't do that. Um, kind of just taper, taper your calories down for a bit. See how you do with that. Check your results. I hope you're tracking all your stuff and see, okay, am I leaning out, am I making progress, am I making gains? And the longer you can do that without doing excessive amounts of cardio, the better for you, my friend. So keep doing that. And uh, if you need help with your prep, let me know. I'm totally happy to answer more questions. Question number three, contest prep. Hello, Functional Flex. What does the last four to six week of a contest prep look like for a figure competition? Okay. All you competitors are not putting your names here. What is up with that? <laughs> but basically, uh, last four to six weeks of the contest prep for figure, you have already done your muscle building phases long ago. You've already built a substantial amount of mass. You've already been cutting down at this point for sure at four to six weeks. So now you're just fine tuning. Your training is going to be, you know, focusing on the target areas, your kind of quote unquote weak points, but I call them strong points because there's no points of you that are weak, where you're going to be focusing on these areas you want to bring up uh, for the stage. You're also going to be want to be doing a lot of posing. You should be posing pretty much daily at that point of your prep, in my opinion. But it depends on how seasoned you are as a competitor and how good your posing is right now. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of posing. You're going to be really focusing on your training, on the weak point, strong point areas. You're going to be doing uh, probably caloric restriction at that stage for sure, where you're kind of cutting down, trying to preserve the muscle, burn some of the fat, and lean out. And then, you know, as you get real close to show, you're going to be really fine-tuning everything. Of course, peak week comes up and all that where... You're actually not going to be doing as much training as you might think. You're going to do half training through the week and then do a lot of posing. And, uh, yeah, depending on your coach and who they are, they might have you do some crazy shit that I don't agree with. But you could expect, depending on your coach, to be, you know, giving you water depletion or caloric super rabbit food diets and tens and hours of cardios and all these things and all the stuff you don't want, in my opinion, or don't need, in my opinion, but... Yeah, that's something you can expect too. But basically, you're going to be wanting to lean out consistently, maintain your muscle mass, bring up your problem zones, and, you know, pose your ass off. And that's going to get you to that competition. Cardio is going to be hit or miss depending on who you are, right? You might not need much. You might need more. It depends on where you're at now, the amount of fat you're burning in the diet you're doing. All these things come into play here. So that's kind of the general overview. You could go watch the same video I just uh, recommended Ashley up here at question one about the bikini competition overview because it's fairly similar, honestly, for figure. There's going to be changes to the areas you want to bring up and all that, but the kind of overview timeline is going to be pretty similar. So go check that one out. And thank you all for these questions. That was a lot of fun. We just hit all those training, nutrition, mindset, contest prep, and it was, felt good. It felt good to me. I kind of powered through that. I'm not even going to lie. That felt real good. Uh, <laughs> if you guys have more questions, keep them coming. I know you have more, actually. I don't even know why I said if you do. I know you guys have more because you're always asking. Keep them coming. I really appreciate them. Remember, you can send them anywhere on all the social medias. You can comment. You can send them here on the podcast. You can email me personally, ryan.milton at functionalflexfitness.net. And you guys, I pride myself on answering these questions and being there for you if you have questions. I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not like a lot of these coaches you hear about and see on the line that you know, you ask them a question, you get a response four weeks later, some crazy shit. I will answer your questions within 24 hours, it's guaranteed. I don't even care how many I get, I'll stay up all night. I will, I will do that. <laughs> so keep your questions coming and keep in mind I answer them first to the people that ask these before I do them on the show. They don't have to wait for the show to get the questions answered. So I'll answer them right away so you can make results. Now what I ask all of you who did not ask a question today but maybe listened to this podcast and got something out of one of these areas, I ask you to apply it in one way or another. And that can be to your own life, your own training. Try it out, test it, see how it works for you. 
etc. Or it can also be applied to you helping other people. So if you have friends, you have family, maybe you're a coach even and you're listening to this, apply this stuff and help your friends, help your family, help your clients, help people better themselves, make better results, better progress, better gains. You guys, a lot of this stuff can be done on your own. And I'm super confident in that. And I think it's super important that everybody keeps going and keeps making progress when it comes to things like this. Thank you for listening to the Functional Flex Cavecast. For more, head over to the social media, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Functional Flex, and check out the YouTube, youtube.com slash Functional Flex Fitness. If you want to try the mobile coaching app, head to functionalflexfitness.net, and thank you for subscribing to this podcast.